and we pray that this moment we have to reflect on your word as we think of your faithfulness and goodness for the last six months that we will be have grateful hearts and that your word will have a place in our hearts make use of me to be a blessing to your people in Jesus name amen you can take your seats we want to appreciate you for keeping it here those of us present this morning and those who are following us online we want to thank you for keeping it here at All Saints Cathedral my name is James Kanye and I love Jesus Christ who is my Lord and Savior uh, let me start by saying that uh, on Tuesday we saw I don't know whether you guys were there we saw a huge number of young people in the streets uh, and of course all of us know why we had young people in the streets protesting about the finance bill 2024-2025 and uh, we are encouraging everyone to read it have a moment to look at it read it it's all over it's online and for sure so that uh, as people protest and if you need to protest you also know what you are protesting against so that you don't just join people protesting and you're not very sure what you're protesting against we also uh, try to uh, refrain people from um, uh, provoking the police officers because they were robbing uh, tear gas canisters in this compound and this compound we had services going on and especially at that time we had a funeral service going on and we are pleading with police officers not to throw tear gas into this compound and there were so many 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 young people in this compound we want to even as we support the young people request you that uh, in case you must join in the protests you must be very careful take care of yourself take care of, take care of your sister take care of your brother uh, and make sure that uh, your rights pursue as you pursue your rights you don't infringe on the rights of rights of other people because the end of your right is the beginning of somebody else right and therefore those of us who are here those of us who are following us online as we engage let us engage responsibly as children of God let's engage with a difference so therefore today we are looking at the subject of Thanksgiving last Sunday we were talking about giving in preparation we dropped the Romans for a while so that we can reflect on the message of giving and Thanksgiving because in all things the Word of God has encouraged us to give thanks. And we are looking at the last six months of the year. And today being the last uh, Sunday of the month of June, or the last Sunday of the half of the year, uh, the first half of the year, we are looking at the subject of thanksgiving. And I have uh, titled my message as thanksgiving. And my preposition or thesis is that we do not need to have more to give thanks. We only need to give thanks more. And somebody said that, I think it's the leader of the worship, that we do not need uh, to have more to give thanks. We only need to give thanks more. In other words, we have enough to give thanks for before we even think of asking for more. And what is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is a sincere inner feeling of gratitude to someone for something that they have done for us, expressed outwardly in a manner that defines the mood beyond words you know the way you say thank you the way you know the way you express that once moved by God's divine care and provision the psalmist in Psalm 116 wondered how can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me he said what shall I render and I think we are the ones who sing that that is in uh, the translation of our uh, authorized King James version is the one that's put it like, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? He felt indebted to God. The psalmist felt indebted to God. He felt like he needed to do something to reciprocate God's goodness to him and probably to his kingdom and probably even to his family. He then said to himself, to that rhetorical question, he said, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. 
I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In other words, I will not do it in private. As I thank the Lord, I will do it in public so that the rest of the people can see uh, my appreciation to God. The psalmist here decides that he would offer to God, uh, to his God, those expressions of devotion that pleases the Lord or that the Lord desires. The cup of salvation here uh, refers to uh, 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 related to the cup of Passover meal that when people ate and they were uh, full after the harvest, uh, towards the end of the meal, they lifted a, a, a cup of salvation, a cup of wine, in a position of God for his provision uh, in the harvest. And they would together thank the Lord. We also see that in um, some families, in some institutions, like where I come, my background in the military, when we gather as military officers, when we have eaten and we are full towards the end of the party, the senior most will say, Ref, uh, replenish your glasses, stand, let us uh, uh, let's, 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 uh, um, toast for the good health of the president and long life. And we will all stand with our glasses full and we will clink the glasses and say for the president. And then we drink and the national anthem is played. And I'm looking forward to one day when my wife will summon my children, my sons and my, <laughs> and my daughter at the end of a meal in the evening, he said, replenish your glass, stand eh, for the good health of your father and long life. Because of him, you have life. Because of him, you have a name. Because of him, you have a roof over your head. Because of your dad, here we are. For the good life, uh, for long life and good health of your father, they clink grasses and they drink and they sing my favorite song. <laughs> you can imagine uh, if I, even if I will not be there, I'll be happy to come back home and watch that video. And my sons will always and forever respect their father. Don't you think so? Eh? I want to challenge my sisters to try that at home. And you can be sure it will work. And this is what we have come to do today. We are looking at the six months that the Lord has carried us. And we are coming together. I don't know which glass you have charged. I hope that you have recharged your glass today. Uh, I don't know whether we should be recharging our pockets. I don't know how. I don't know. Maybe we should, I don't know. We just recharge. Anyway, come and thank the Lord because of what he has done. Does that mean that my time is up? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, recharge. So, the Israelites had a crippling attitude of complaining and grabbing. God had miraculously taken care of them during their wilderness wandering. Yet, they constantly complained to God for lack of that and for lack of this. We too at times tend to concentrate our attention and devotion, devote our energies on the negatives rather than the positives of life. You know, let us avoid being distracted by the disappointments and derivations, deprivations that God allows for our own spiritual good and growth. For us to appreciate God, we do not need more to be thankful. We just need to be more Thankful. Let us learn to see the best of in every situation. When in prison, Apostle Paul considered that as an opportunity to preach the message to the Gentiles. And so he did to the glory of God. In our reading today, we did two scriptures. Let me concentrate on the book of uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verse 11. So that, uh, because I do not have time to go to, 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 to the book of uh, um, uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, chapter 8. The Bible says we, that Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, that is in chapter 17, in verse 10, uh, I mean in chapter 11 to 19, the word of God says that 10 lepers approached him. That is how they are introduced. Standing at a distance, you know, remember the social distance? Standing at a social distance or physical distance, as it was required of lepers, according to the Levitical, uh, the Levitical law. You can find that in Leviticus chapter 13 and 14. They called out to Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Verse 13. When he saw them, he had compassion on them. And the Bible says, he told them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they were going, as they journeyed, they were healed. I want to concentrate on verse 15 only. Verse 15 only.
When they encountered Jesus and shouted for help, they were how many? They were ten. The word of God says they were ten. But that changes, they were ten strong and united by their common sickness, leprosy. Leprosy had turned them into social outcasts. Because of being ostracized from the society, they had discovered their need for unity and help. And that is how they are introduced in verse 12. Ten men, they lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. But when you come to verse 15, that is my first point, their address changes from ten of them to Hey, are you sure, really? The address changes from 10 of them in chapter 15, in verse 15 to one of them, yes. <laughs> the address changes from 10 of them, 10 men, to one of them. From 10 to one of them. Who? One of them. And this may sound ridiculous, but does indeed paint a familiar picture that when we are faced with a challenge that unifies us in prayer. Like when we are praying for our children in class 8, those who are in form 4, like right now we have uh, issues in our country, that brings us together. You know? Difficulties remind us to lift our united voices in prayers. When we had corona, you should have seen us praying together. But we are not as quick and as united when it's time for thanksgiving. The word of God says one of them who may not even have been considered to be religious. Jesus asked, where are the others? Is this the only one who has come back? In fact, Jesus calls him a foreigner, meaning that probably he was not even a Jew who knew the importance of coming back to give thanks. But he turned back to say thank you. One of them put a pause button came back. That is point number one. Number two, when did he come back? The same verse says one of them. When did he come? When he saw that he was healed. Point number two, this is not a mere reference to a realization of physical restoration to health, but an expression of inner spiritual insight. He recognized and appreciated that that physical healing had a new meaning, a new social status. For something unusual, something uncommon, something extraordinary had happened to him, and that had changed his life for good. He did not take, he did not take his being restored back to, uh, to, to normal life for granted or assume it as his right. He considered it and traced it back to Jesus. Just like the blind man who in John chapter 9 verse 25 was restored, was given his sight back, he said to his critics and his challengers, I may not know more about this man called Jesus, like you guys probably know him, but one thing is for sure. That, what was he sure about? I was blind. The rest you can keep to yourself. That's what he said to them. I may not know more about that Jesus, but one thing I know. I was blind, but now I can see. The guy who was restored of his health, he traced it back to Jesus. The leper knew how people treated him before. How his life would have continued to be, except for Christ. As a young man, as a young girl, when you see people beaten in life, some of them drunkard, some of them lost in drugs, we should be able to say, that is me, except, except for Christ. That is me in the ditch, except for Christ. That is me in drugs, except for Christ. It's just by the favor of God that you are the way you are. He appreciated that there were many, many, many more people who still remained reprous. For his healing, 
It was not a blanket healing or elimination of leprosy on earth. It is him who was healed. For him, God's masses had been extended. This was a deep spiritual insight that motivated and moved him to give thanks to God. And by the way, do you think there is any God-given advantage in your life that many other people do not have? Let me give you an example of, uh, uh, of my sister. I, I had told her that once in a while I will use her example. My sister and her husband, a couple of years ago, they bought a car. And they sent everybody a message. I have six, 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 six sisters. They sent everybody, and we are 10 in our family, they sent everybody in the family a message to say to thank God with them because of the new car. So a few days later, it was time for me to go and see the new car. It was this, you know, this, this, uh, these are doo-doo cars, like the one I drive here. And Malimo has also a doo-doo car. This doo-doo, <laughs> the small ones. They have many names. They even have funny names. I don't want to mention them here. They have funny names, yeah? Those doo-doo cars. Whose spare parts? Sometimes you walk the whole of Grog and I don't, you don't find <laughs> because they are in all shapes. So it was that one, eh? One of those. Old, rickety, KBM, old one, badly used. This is what she was calling, she was thanking God for. The new? For her, it was? She had not driven a car before. So you think she, if you think she was wrong, she was celebrating God because of her new car. And she was telling everybody to join hands with her to give thanks for the new car. So that which probably you consider old, when it's in somebody's hands, it is the more reason you should give thanks for, for it. And even if you do not have something to give God thanks for, you can look for something that you gave thanks for last year and give thanks for it uh, again. Like a small boy who was asked by his mother to give thanks for dinner. He looked at the food. It was actually the Bulgarian vegetable that they had taken during lunch. So because they didn't have something else for supper, it was the same leftover, his mother asked him to give thanks for it. He looked at it and said, God, Thank you for this Hungarian vegetable again. They had already given thanks for it during lunch, uh, but they, he found a reason to give, it, to give thanks for it again. You know? Do you think that there is a God-given advantage in your life that many other people do not have? Maybe an opportunity to be married. Maybe you're already married. There are people who are standing here. They are saying <clears throat> they would like to be married in the next five years, as Reverend Marimo was asking. Maybe you have children. There are people who have been looking for children in, in marriage. You have been to school or you are already in school to be educated. Some of the, you here have the best of education in the world to have good health all the year round. You've never been admitted to the hospital. And there are people here who are struggling with their lives. And they are your age mates. Some of them are your age mates. Some of them are your age mates. Some of them are your age mates. They are here. And they are still thanking God. There are others who are watching us here. They are from probably hospital beds. I know a member of this congregation who sent me a message this morning. Let me not mention her name. She is recuperating from the hospital and she is asking, from home. And she is asking me to join her together with you to give thanks to God because of her healing. So far, she is out of the uh, uh, theater. So for you being able to do all these things, my brother, my sisters, maybe an opportunity for you to, to a position, a title, at work, you know, a salary. There are people who are looking for jobs. Has it ever occurred to you that you need to acknowledge that, let alone thanksgiving? Or do you think, there are many people who are sharper, more hardworking than me. And they are still out there looking for jobs. And I have a full-time job. I'm able to, school my, to pay school fees for my children. Are you still waiting for more before you give thanks? Can't you see what the Lord has done? The Word of God says, when he saw that he was healed, learn to put a pause button to your demand prayers. Acknowledge and appreciate where you have come from, where you are, and what you have, even who you are. Ask God to give you eyes to see 
then you will appreciate. Maybe you even have a small uh, old car like my sister. You no longer waste time at the bus stop. Ama unafikiria tunastahili kutoa bus stages because we are ripata gari. Bado kuna watu wanatama. Bado kuna watu wanasimama kwa stage. Hata kama Mungu alikupea gari wewe. Take time to take stock and you will stop complaining and instead you will sing a song of victory. The final thing is that one, one of, out of ten, when he saw that he was healed, the word of God says, he came back. He came back. Just like the psalmist who asks, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his goodness? He came back. He had a moment. He came, the Bible says, at the feet of Jesus and thanked him for healing. Remember, Jesus was not expecting them back. He had already told them, go ahead and show yourself to their priests. But he thought it was important for him to trace his way back to the blessing of his restoration to heal, to hell. And he traced it back to Jesus. And he came and praised Jesus. The word of God says he, he bowed down before him and he praised him. In our African uh, traditions, we do not come to give thanks empty-hearted. And I think that was also Hebrew culture. That is why David is saying, what shall I render? I wish you guys know Kikuyu. Ninge wafudisha Kikuyu Kidogo. The Kikuyu Bible says, Neke Godukera Jehovah. You know Goduka? If somebody, that sounds like English, yeah? <laughs> you know, when you visited somebody, you went with a, with a kiondo. You know kiondo? You went with the kiondo. So on your way home, as you, as you visited with kiondo, on your way home, your, 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 your host would put some weight on the basket. If they didn't have something to give you in return, they would take one of the things that you had given to them, put it back into the basket. Not that they did not appreciate that particular piece. That shows that they didn't have anything else in the house to thank you. But they could not just return your basket empty. It, may, it, it had to have some weight. It may not be equal to what you brought, but it had to have some weight. This is what David is saying. What shall I render unto Jehovah? What shall I render unto Jehovah? I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will do it in public. And I want to believe that this morning we have come prepared as we have been talking that we will come before the Lord with a way of showing that we are grateful to him for the last six months. He has kept and sustained us. Hallelujah. I want to stop at that. My message is over. I want to invite us now Think, sit down. I know you have already thought as a family. You have thought through. Maybe you have come with physical gift. Maybe in form of money. Some of you have already sent or they are going to send to the pay bill. And we are going to have that moment of blessing you together with your family. So, I will say a prayer over us. And then as you come here. You just come as a group. Maybe we will we'll ask all those who are here, that is the, this row and this one and that one, those the three rows, then this team and those who are upstairs, and then we bless you. And you, as, we, as we bless you, you go back to your seat. And eventually when we have finished with everybody, we will say a benediction. But the way to do it so that we can save on time, even if you have sent your gift to the pay bill, you still come to the front because we want everybody to come to the front and benefit from the blessings of the sprinkling of water. That is water for cleansing. The, the, the water that you see here is water for cleansing. And it also has salt for restoration and preservation. And it also has oil for anointing. So let us pray as the praise and worship comes. Father, we thank you for reminding us of the many things that you have done for us. Some of us have been promoted within the last six months. Some of us have gotten married. Some of us have had an opportunity to go back to class. Some of us, our businesses are doing well. 
we have witnessed you, even in our health, and in many other ways, Lord, that you have blessed us. Others, we are just trusting you and waiting patiently, just like your servant David said, that I waited upon the Lord patiently, and he lifted my legs from the mire, put my legs on a stone and give me a new song. Some of us are still waiting on you, Jehovah. And as we come with hearts full of gratitude this morning, we pray that you may uh, accept our hearts of gratitude, that you may accept our small gifts that are not compared to anything that you have given us. That as we come before you, Lord, you will accept us before you accept our gift, and that our gift will be a sweet-smelling aroma, even as it is used in this cathedral and beyond for the extension of your kingdom. And even for those who do not have anything in terms of material, Father, we pray that as I come before you with hearts full of gratitude, that they will also be acceptable before you. Bless us as we go through this exercise and accept our gifts. In the name of God the Father, 